Today I'm gonna show you how to turn a day photo into a night photo and how to turn on the lights in the little house. And if you want, we can even spice it up a little bit using the I'm Renzi night brushes. These are available in the ultimate brush bundle which I just launched. So if you want, check it out down below in the video description. Let's dive into the tutorial and let me show you how to turn on the lights at night. Now, to turn on the light, of course, we first need to create some nice moody night scene, let's say, because otherwise, yeah, we don't really need to turn on the lights. So we can do this by using three adjustment layers. The first one that is an exposure adjustment layer, and we're simply going to lower the exposure quite a bit. Something like this looks pretty good to me. The second uh, adjustment layer is a white balance adjustment layer, and that is because usually at night the tones of color let's say are more bluish so we're gonna drag this slider to the left to create some nice blue tones and then also at night usually colors you don't see them as vibrant as during the daylight so we want to reduce the the vibrance or the saturation as well so i created the vibrance adjustment layer and i'm just gonna drag the saturation down and well that is basically it so let me show you the before this was the before and this is the after and we can clip all of these to my background image now next step we want to turn on the lights from the inside so what we want to do is we want to create a fill layer so i'm gonna go to the top i'm gonna hit layer and then i'm gonna click on fill layer and by default it is either set to black or white but i want to uh, to color it some nice orangey warm yellowish tone let's say something like this looks pretty good to me now I don't want this uh, fill layer everywhere. I want it only applied to the windows. So what I want to do is select my fill layer and press command I to invert the layer mask of this fill layer. And let me zoom in a little bit. If I press B on the keyboard now, you can see that I can draw back the effect uh, with some uh, colored brush. Now, somehow my brush is yellow, um, something I don't really like. So as you can see, if I brush with white, my foreground color, apparently it's set to white but here it says it's yellow um, you can see that i can brush back the effect so if i press uh, x on the keyboard i can uh, erase it with black now i don't want to do this with my brush tool even though i could but an easier way to do this is by using the freehand selection tool or how i prefer to call it the lasso tool so i'm going to press l on the keyboard and that is this tool right here and if you cannot find it usually it's hidden underneath the rectangular marquee tool now there are three types of freehand selection tools, let's say, or lasso tools. There's the first one, which is the freehand one. Then there's the polygonal one and there's the magnetic one. And we want to use the polygonal one. Now let's zoom in a little bit on our window. And what I want to do now is simply click and make a quick selection or a nice selection of my windows. So obviously there's a few, so I'm gonna hold control on Mac and I'm not really sure what the keyboard shortcut is on windows. And I'm just gonna make sure I have everything, or I will be selecting everything. Now, as you can see here in the top, you can see I have a feather of one. Um, yeah, this is, depends a little bit on your own taste, but I think it looks kind of nice when dealing with windows, let's say. Another way to do this actually is by creating the full square first. So I'm still holding command because I have another active selection. And now you want to subtract from your selection. So what I can do is hold Alt and then click here like so. And this will actually subtract from my selection. And I can also do it this direction. And this basically gets the same effect. Now you can see my windows are a little bit weird, but yeah, it doesn't really matter for now. Let's keep it like it is. All right, now what we want to do is we want to fill our selection with white. So there's a couple of ways to do this, but the easiest one is to go to edit and then, oops, and then hit fill and then fill with custom color and set it to white because somehow my primary color is set to yellow and I'm not really sure what's going on, but make sure to fill it with white and then hit apply. So now I can press command D to deselect and yeah, there we've got our filled windows, let's say. Now, this is not the end result yet because we want to change the blend mode of this uh, fill layer to add. 
And now you can actually see that it starts looking like there's coming some light from the inside. All right, now this already looks pretty cool, but we're not done yet because we want to make to make some radiation, let's say, from the inside of the house out to the outside. Now we could use a fill layer for this once again, but let's do another method right now. And that is by creating a new pixel layer and we're going to uh, use the same polygonal lasso tool once again. And I'm just going to click right here and make sure I've got a nice area to cover so I have some more room to play with later on. And this I also want to fill with this same orangey uh, tone, let's say. So what I can do is go back to edit, hit fill and then make sure to set the color to this orangey color, let's say. Sorry, this yellow orangey color, something like this. And let's hit apply. Now, of course, this looks terrible. And that is because we want uh, to set our blend mode to screen. And now we can actually see through our colors a little bit, but you can see that the effect is still way too hard. So what do we want to do is we want to make sure the light is diffusing. So we want to have it very sharp at the edge of the window, let's say. And the further we go away from the window, the more diffuse we want the light to be. And I found a nice way to do this is by using a depth of field blur. So I'm gonna go to my live filters and I'm gonna click on depth of field blur. And let me zoom out a little bit. And what you want to do is you want to drag this thing to the window and uh, to the right side of the window where you want to have the sharpest edge. And now you want to um, reduce the size of these circles quite a bit. And how this thing actually works is from the center, the center is gonna be super sharp and everything in the center is gonna be sharp. And from here to here is gonna be a gradient, let's say of diffused light. and outside of the circle so outside of everything that's where the light is going to be the blurred the most let's say so if i increase the radius right now you'll see what i mean you can see that from the inside right here the light is pretty uh, very sharp and then it goes from sharp to blurry and then it uh, is going to be blurry all the way out so this looks pretty good to me and let's cross this thing off and we can always change this thing later and what we want to do now with this uh, diffuse light let's say um, we want to create a layer mask. So I'm going to uh, select my light layer, let's say, and I'm going to create a layer mask. And what I want to do is grab my uh, gradient tool. So I'm going to press G on the keyboard and I want to click and drag from the window away, let's say. So from here to away. And you can see that we get this nice um, gradient going on. So something like this. And if you want to adjust it a little bit, there's this little slider in the middle. And this is actually the midpoint of your gradient. So you can play around with this slider a little bit uh, to see what effect looks best. All right. Now this already looks pretty good, but we want to make it look even better. And that is by reducing the opacity just a little bit. So if we reduce it to, let's say about 75%, this is for me what looks the best actually. Now, the easiest way to get this thing to the other window as well is by simply selecting this one and pressing Command G to duplicate this layer. Press V on the keyboard to select your move tool and move it over to the other window. Now, what I like doing is to change the direction a little bit. So I'm just going to change the direction a little bit. Something like this looks fine. Maybe I want to change this uh, gradient a little bit. So just going to change this thing up just ever so slightly maybe move it more downwards and reduce the opacity or increase the opacity i think i like it even more when it's less opaque now if you want to change the color of this light there's a quite a nice way to do this and we don't have to go back into our fill layer and kind of try to change all of the lights what you can do is select all of them group them together by pressing command g and inside of the group, you want to create an HSL adjustment layer and make sure that it is inside of the group. And now you can use this slider to change the light of your layers, let's say. So if you want it to be less vibrant or more vibrant or whatever, you can all do this inside of your HSL adjustment layer. Now, this is a great way to do this, but there is a way nicer and more efficient way to actually uh, achieve this. And that is by using brushes. So let me actually hide my light layers for now and let's create a new um, pixel layer. 
just above our light layers let's say now i want to go to my uh, custom brushes which are the i am renzi light brushes which you can find in the ultimate brush bundle version 3 which just launched and let's say i want to grab this light right over here so i'm gonna press b on the keyboard to select my brush tool and you can see my foreground color is already set to this orangey yellow now what I want to do is I want to make sure to stamp it in the middle of my screen so I don't want it to cross, let's say, my canvas. Stamp it in the middle of my screen and then I'm going to use my move tool to position it. Somewhere around here. And let's turn it a little bit downwards actually, so something like this looks nice. And what I want to do now is simply turn this layer into screen. So the blending mode, I want to turn it to screen and now with a mask so inside of my layer mask i want to brush out the parts that i don't really like so let's grab a soft round brush and make sure your foreground color is set to black and you simply brush out the parts that you don't need which is basically this one and look how that looks you can even see like the window or the separate windows now of course we can just copy this thing over so if i press command j and i move this thing to the other window of course i wouldn't have to make it fit so yeah i'm just gonna adjust it slightly and position it where i want um, we can reduce the opacity a little bit if we want to and that is how to create this light um, with brushes now if we want to take it one step further what we could do is create a new pixel layer and grab some soft round brush and make sure we've got some nice orangey color now this is pretty yellow so let's actually make this a little more orangey something like this to match the color and what we can do now is just click here once use our move tool to reshape this bulb a little bit or to do, to shape this ball and i think something like this looks pretty good and now we can go into the blend ranges and we want to play around with the blend ranges a little bit so that we can actually make it look like the light is cast from the inside. So something like this looks actually very nice to me. I'm taking the effect out from the shadows right now. And that is what gives the super nice effect. And of course, with an, the eraser tool or with another mask, um, I can just brush out the effect from parts where I don't want it. So what I could do is make a selection of my background something like this i would say and then go into the mask and mask it out from spots that i don't want it and that is how to turn on the lights when it's dark now i hope you like this tutorial and if you want to check out the ultimate brush bundle you will find the link down below it consists of 176 brushes across 11 brush packs ranging from northern lights planets rocks trees birds waterfalls basically anything you can imagine you want and would need to uh, make some creative photo edits so go check it out and i see you in the next one cheers